Previously on Sailing Adrift, we coasted right into Mexico, easy peasy. Milady. Then we had ourselves a quick celebration before the daunting task of legally checking into the country. Not gonna lie, that part sucked. Despite having helped through the entire process, it was still super confusing and very frustrating. But at the end of the day... We're done. Kelly, hold that up. Hell yeah. <laughs> you see that? It was three trips in the making, kind of an experience. Yeah, glad to have that experience behind us. We raised our Mexican flag for the first time ever, explored the city of Ensenada a little, and now we're on to the next destination. Today we depart Ensenada. We're now officially checked into Mexico and we're headed to parts unknown to us. Today we'll be sailing over to Isla de Cedros. That's right, I said sailing. It's a long hop though, so I hope you're ready. Let the journey begin. Captain's log, we've just left the fuel dock. It is 1.30 a.m. p.m. and we are officially starting this journey. That should take somewhere between 42 and 50 hours. So we should not arrive in the dark, knock on wood. Who wants to bet we'll arrive in the dark? Um, we aspire to sail. We do have a bit of wind, about 10 knots, but it's right on our nose now. So attempting to do that, we'll have to wait until we're out of this bay. And today's sea state is not bad, but it's not as nice as it was coming in. The weather is nowhere near as nice as it was coming in. Uh, we see a lot of uh, just kind of chop kicked up by the waves. So I'm hoping once we get a little uh, out uh, out of the bay and heading out to sea a bit, this should all subside. We shall find out. Goodbye, Ensenata. Your name sounds a lot like the Spanish word for salad. But you are better than most salads. I found this. Yeah. Excessive calories, excessive sugar, excessive saturated fat, and excessive sodium. Checks all the boxes. I like how Mexico's looking out for you. Yeah. In 2020, Mexico enacted a law requiring these black warning labels on the front of food packages that contain excess sugar, calories, sodium, or saturated fat by official Mexican standards. They seem shameful to some, but not to us. We calmly motored for a few hours and noticed large nets of what appeared to be dead jellyfish floating on the ocean surface. Upon further discovery, we learn that these are valellas, and they are actually free-floating and live on the surface of the open ocean. These jellyfish are very much alive, and commonly known by the names Sea Raft, By the Wind Sailor, Purple Sail, Little Sail, or simply Valella. Soon enough, we had some more lively encounters. More dolphins! We hung out with our dolphin friends for a while, and then night fell. It's the morning of day two, heading to Cedros Island. We motored all night long, but Kelly's just awoken, awake. She's up. We're gonna try flying our uh, drifter sail. See how this goes. Hello? I pass Chris our drifter sail up through the hatch in the V-berth, but already it's looking like a twisted mess. Chris pulls the sail through and starts rigging it up. Yeah, that doesn't look right. I think it's twisted to shit, dude. Well, now it is. As soon as it went up, it got all wrapped around. It 
can't get wrapped around based on how I had it tied. It could. It's like holding things from a triangle from three points and saying it got wrapped around itself. It was all secured, so it started off being twisted. Okay, let's try this again. Can you untie that knot? After getting reoriented and some minor adjustments, it was now time. It's fine. Do not lunge over the side. I, didn't lunge. I, I just lunge. I literally just did this. I'm holding on. Okay. As you can see, our drifter sail is a little all over the place. So we decided to tighten it a bit by using our spinnaker pole. But that thing is a b so we conducted a brief team meeting to discuss our options. I think the only way we're going to make this work is get this pole out. Okay, do you want to do that? What are our options? Not do it. And? Do it. What? I'm asking you. Happy to report we got the pole out and nobody died. We are officially under sail power. Going how fast? Between two and a half and three and a half knots. Well, now that the sail's up, we had to get some fishing stuff out too. You gonna go one line or two? Pardon me? Yeah. Who the heck else would I be talking to? Uh, for now, just start with one. Chris let out his line and waited patiently, monitoring for any action. We've been sailing for two whole hours and we still haven't caught a fish. This is BS. Uh, we're in about 10 knots of wind, maybe gusts of 15 or 16 every once in a while, and we're popping along at about four knots. Got the uh, mizzen up as well, just kind of acting as a stabilizer. Popping along, this is sailing, I guess. This is our real first time in the ocean with the engine off. Just uh, coasting along, not bad. A little eerie, to be honest. Especially with this ominous cloud cover. Yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to, that's for sure. We're gonna be there first thing in the morning. Um, so it'll be about like 40 hour total transit. Yes, this would take some getting used to, but the motion was slightly better than motoring, enough so that I was able to bust open my laptop and get some work done. We watched the sun set and took our drifter sail down for the night. We kicked the motor back in gear and pressed on. Chris and I took turns on watch, monitoring our systems and radar. And in classic sailing adrift fashion, we once again arrived in the dark with a record time of 38 hours. That should take somewhere between 42 and 50 hours. So we should not arrive in the dark, knock on wood. Okay, there is Sacros. Kelly's getting the snubber ready. That's her against the hull. That's about all you can see. <laughs> We're gonna make the turn here in about 10 minutes. Head right for the uh, harbor. And then once we are just outside the harbor entrance, we'll hang a left and head into the anchorage area. We found a spot and now we're ready to drop the hook. Ready when you are. Welcome to Isla de Cedros. Yeah. Oh, I gotta look real rough right now. I know I do. I'm not even wanting to be on camera. Here's the deal. <laughs> I, I'm gonna... No, you this don't need to bad. be... Yeah, it is. A few hours later, during normal people hours... We're in Cedros Island, and I'm tired. <laughs> I 
Uh, we got in last night at about 3 a.m. Probably went to bed about 4.30, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that sounds about right. Kelly was up for work at 8.30, 8.30. so I was up for work at 8.30. Yep. And uh, we're going to go in and check in, say hello to the port captain. Let's get a pan of the uh, town itself. What do you say there, Kel? There it is, in all its glory. Right over here is the big jetty to the harbor. And that's where we're gonna go. There's apparently a spot we can uh, tie up our little ding ding. Floaters are all geared up and tested, so we're ready to go. Where'd you go? Let's go, are you ready? Oh, hello, here we go. Just a leisurely little uh, base here, Kelly. Yeah, this is nice. We didn't really know what to expect from this town. Typically, we rely on the word of other cruisers, a few different guidebooks, and of course, YouTube. Clearly, Isla de Cedros wasn't a super popular destination, so the amount of information available was pretty limited. First, we awkwardly tied to the dock, then played a really hilarious game of charades with some fishermen until one of them insisted we get in his truck and take us to the port captain. Then we got in his truck, really without any idea of where the port captain was. A few minutes later, we approached a very official looking building, so that was a good sign. Checking in didn't take long at all, and the port captain actually spoke English, and was also very friendly. Well, we've checked in with the port captain, he gave us permission to anchor inside the harbor, so that's cool. Yeah, like we didn't even ask him, he just kind of gave that, that was like, an option. Yeah, like a last little, out. oh by the way. Yeah. So that was cool, and we got a ride up here, which was nice, and now we are going to walk down. And... Down is better than up. We leisurely walked down the hill back to the dinghy. We were on a mission to find a cabbage though, so we stopped in this little tienda. Chris and I were really hoping for some tacos tonight. We got cabbage. This place was a little eerie, very quiet, and we saw very few people on our walk. The beach had a few huts and pergolas for shade, but no people around to enjoy them, and all the storefronts were closed. Felt like we were in a ghost town. We headed back to the boat so I could finish my work day, and then Chris made us some amazing tacos. Pico de gallo, shredded cabbage, cotija, pickled onions, chipotle crema, and avocado. Nice. All ready to go. These look bomb. We quickly decided Isla de Cedros was a good short-term pit stop, but not a place we wanted to be for multiple days. So we decided to pick up the hook and keep moving. It's 5.30 in the AM. We're saying goodbye to Isla de Cedros because it's a bit rolly here and we haven't been sleeping particularly well. Kelly's filling up a water bottle. That's something that happens about 36 times a day. This is number one though, so it's kind of monumentous. Uh, we're heading to Ascension, Bahia de Ascension. I hope it's not this rolly. I haven't slept well for a couple of days. Kelly hasn't either. We have 13 hours-ish. If we can maintain six knots all the way to Ascension, so we've got to get up and at them this morning. That's why we are up before the sun. Gotta get the boat ready and then we're gonna take off. How are we looking, dude? We're looking good. I think we got everything stowed away. Hatches are shut. Everything's ready to go. So we're ready to fire it up? Yep. Okay, you're on the bow. Get it good, baby. I monitor the chain up front and rinse it off with fresh water to help prevent salt corrosion and remove the stinky sea debris. Then I secure the anchor once it's back up in the roller and put the cover back on our chain hosel and store the bridle. We left Isla de Cedros pretty quickly. The morning started out with overcast skies and a cool breeze. Oh man, so like uh, I was mentioning before when I was a bit on the groggier side, we're getting out of here. We give Cedros Island two stars. Yeah. I mean, the reasons we didn't like it, nothing had to do with the little community. It was just, uh... Yeah, the people are super friendly. Yeah, they yeah. Uh, gave us a ride to the port captain's office. The port captain was very nice. We went and bought a cabbage. I found out the word for cabbage is 
repollo, R-E-P-O-L-L-O, -L -L like free chicken. Anyway, so we're taking off to Bahia de Ascension, or Ascension Bay. This could also be rolling. I hope it's not. That was a big reason why we wanted to leave yeah, so quickly. Yeah, it was because we're sleep deprived. We just yeah. wanted to get out of there. The Anchorage was like, oh, this isn't that bad. This isn't that bad. Oh. And then at night, it would just be like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I just could not sleep there, man. I uh, had real trouble, and I don't understand why, because I would wake up frequently, and maybe it was just because I was getting rolled all over the place. But anyway, we decided to take off a little earlier. We really couldn't find much to do. The water wasn't warm enough for us yet to play in the water. The air temperature is still in the 60s, so it wasn't like that would make up for a little bit cooler water. Um, hopefully soon we'll get to get out our uh, water toys and play. But the biggest thing that I feel like we're missing in this whole cruising experience is we haven't met other cruisers yet. And I'm really looking forward to that aspect. I think that plays a huge part. Anybody you ask, you know what the best part of cruising is? It's the people you meet, both other cruisers and the people in the community. So uh, looking forward to that to kind of round out our experience and really get an idea of what this is all about. So if you're down there, look us up on AIS. And don't, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd like to hear from you. Is that creepy? Person, like, Kelly, it's, she borders on stalking. You know, we've been talking. We live in an age where the information is out there, and we put it out there ourselves. Like we literally. Uh, you sound like a stalker now, rationalizing your own thing. Hey, man. I just want she friends. She sent me the pictures. I, I didn't want go to her house and take them when she wasn't looking. <laughs> Chris went to go put the fishing line out, and I am on watch for crab pots and helping the boat. Yes. It's waiting for those cans to jingle. We got the cedar plug out. That's what's supposed to catch Benito. They're supposed to be potentially very prevalent in this area. It's been 18 seconds and I haven't caught one yet though, so I'm a little skeptical. While Chris tested his patience, I made us some eggs. After eggs, Chris took a nap. We were both so sleep deprived coming into Isla de Cedros and our two nights rolling around in the anchorage did not leave us feeling well rested at all. Eventually, the sun came out and Chris woke up from his nap. The uh, conditions seem to have improved quite a bit. It seems sunnier and the sea state is better than the rolliness we experienced earlier. Yeah, I took the shit. Thanks. I took a bit of a nappy poo. Now you're refreshed. I do feel a lot better. You look a lot better. Well, thank you, Kelly. I uh, will take that as a compliment. It is. I need that. Are you going to go take a little siesta? Uh, not right now. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, your time starts now and you only get two hours. I'm, I'm just going to catch a fish while, while it's my turn. I hope you do. The line's just out there. Yeah, I'm going to go check on it. Stupid motor. Yep, nothing's happened. We got this all rigged up so when the, the fish bites, the cans go off, but I doubt you can hear it in the cabin anyway. And way back there somewhere is the cedar plug bobbing in the waters. We spent the next few hours enjoying the sun. The sea state was quite pleasant, a great time to relax and unwind. Then the entertainment arrived. The dolphins are back! Woo! 
As we started approaching Bahia Ascension, we took our turn in and the waves started bashing into us and knocking us around quite a bit. Coming about. Yeah, it's not gonna be <laughs> comfortable here. We got a big was. swell and we gotta get across it. As soon as we get behind that island, we'll be all right. Despite having a little PTSD from the rolliness of our anchorage in Isla de Cedros, we had heard Bahia Ascension's approach was somewhat difficult, but once inside, we should be in calm waters. We were both so ready to just be there. It's been such a long passage and we're running on very little sleep. If this anchorage is too windy or rolly, we could be in a lot of trouble. We got douched. With winds just a little over 25 knots and gusts into the 30s, our approach was less than ideal, but once inside the bay, conditions calmed down just enough to drop our anchor. How are we looking? Good, boss. Just as the sun's setting. All right, I'm gonna back down on it a little bit and then we'll call it good. Not the plan. <laughs> be here. Now get out. Look at that! Woo! Yep, pretty stoked to be here. This was a good decision. Well done. Look at that! It's just insane. That's like the best sunset we've had so far. What's up? This is a little like surreal because we came in, it was all nasty, the <laughs> wind got all crazy right yeah. as we were coming in. You know, it was like pushing 18 knots out there. Then when we rounded the corner, it was like 25 knots and waves were coming up. And we came in here and we tried to anchor and it's all ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna anchor and seriously, not 15 minutes later, there's like less than two knots of wind. Nothing like We're serenaded dead by some cool music. Yep. We got this gorgeous sunset. <laughs> like what's up with this, dude? It's kind of crazy. Tune in next week for some crazy shenanigans in Bahia Ascension. I'm on lookout. Kelly's showering. Let's see if it, yeah, there. I just got your head. That's good. You're doing a great job, babe. Thanks. I, I'm looking out for people. There she is. She's cleaning herself right off. <laughs> Goodbye, Ensenata. Your name sounds a lot like the Spanish word for salad, but you are better than most salads, but not as good as some. Let's think on that, shall we? Ensenada was like a delicious piece of candy that someone dropped and stepped on, but it's still delicious, so you'll eat it anyway. That's Ensenada. I'll show you again, but like seriously, dude, you gotta learn this knot. You can't keep being a sailor without like knowing it. Can't remember how to teach it that way. You make a loop so that the uh, We'll just do that later. That is a lot of dirt. Put my head in there, all of it. There we go. No, all of it. All my head. Yeah. There. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Wonderful conditions we're experiencing. Yes, this is quite nice. Elmar. Uh, we're saying goodbye to Isla del Israel. <laughs> yeah, baby. Look at that muscle woman. I did it. If you listen closely, they're like, a oh, welcome drifter to our lovely bay. You are recording. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. It's Chris and Kel from Sailing Adrift. We're back. It had to go rock, 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 and your boat rocked all night. Oh. That makes it okay. Yeah. If someone murders your dog, it's okay to murder other people's dogs. That seems extreme. Hey, man, that's how you illustrated a point. <laughs>